Welcome back, everyone. I'm here with a new episode, and I'm sitting down with Colorado 710, Matthew Tucker and Christopher Southern. They were both master tech, <clears throat> excuse me, master lab techs, and they are starting up a new business. It's all about terpenes. And um, first of all, guys, I want to ask you what got you started into consuming cannabis? Um, well, I mean, originally, I guess what it started me smoking cannabis was the same thing everybody else was, you know teenager in high school just doing the same thing everybody else was but yeah um super bored <laughs> super bored i grew up uh, in a town outside of uh, a bigger town um i graduated with one other person so <laughs> well, that is a small town that's yeah. smaller than moffitt get real bored you know <laughs> yeah i'm from my high school we had 120 some in my my graduating class so it was pretty rural yeah for sure so yeah it was pretty boring nothing to do yeah. Uh, kids either drinking and something else getting in trouble and uh everybody knows everything about everybody yeah so we got a lot of us in trouble <laughs> but i find the ones that smoked weed instead of consuming the other drugs are doing 10 times better now yeah mm -hmm. mentally physically and family wise you know socially oh, absolutely yeah. and uh what about you there matt what got you consuming when yeah, did you start so i actually started at like 14 um I had an aunt that said it was part of my Indian heritage, and uh, she gave me my first rip. Uh, I have ADHD, so it's pretty hard for me to calm down and like stick to one topic. And uh, that night, it was the first night I slept dead. I slept past like six o'clock in the morning. I uh, wanted to eat. I was slow to do my homework, and uh, wasn't sporadic. And ever since then, I was like, man, this is this is me this you can sit still yeah this was what i and i graduated you know 47th out of 47 but i also had six kids that scored a perfect act and uh i mean they were all smart small school paonia colorado and uh growing up out there you see the best cultivators around and they're growing 14 13 pound plants in their so backyard you, you're both from colorado yes um, sir yeah. How was it before legalization? Was it pretty easy to get weed out here? You know, I I remember getting caught at a young age going to, like, everything was medical, and everybody had medical postings for their patients and everything, and I just, like, I smelt it, and I went over there to my neighbors and just saw this first grow of my life and saw these huge plants, and I just fell in love with them and uh, asked them how they were doing that. And then, you know, my family has, my stepdad has black lungs, so he started growing for medicinal reasons for his lungs and things like that. Was he eating edibles with it or was yeah. he smoking it? Yeah, so at the time we got like the Magic Butter Maker and we started making RSO or Phoenix Tears and uh, we're just making edibles and stuff like that for him. And then now he like vapes. Um, but he's trying to find like those phenos that help him with being able to eat and the medications that he has to take for being a black lung patient. And uh, he lost a lot of weight and it helped him not deteriorate and be able to wake up every day and go do basic mundane tasks. And he, he went from being a non-believer in cannabis to being one of the biggest believers and somebody who coal mined for 23 years wasn't allowed to touch it couldn't even talk about it and now it's i mean it's what's keeping them alive well i'm from west virginia there's a lot of coal miners there too yeah that are still mm -hmm. fighting for coal and i keep saying that if they would legalize it would help their lungs out they could get jobs in cultivation outdoors above the ground and somehow use some of that bio waste as fuel instead yeah. of using coal yeah and as my stepdad says you know he spent 23 years ripping up the earth and now his whole goal is to till it and reamend it yeah to and fix it that's what i went to school it. was with environmental geoscience so yeah. i know that it's destroying the rivers the fishing mm -hmm. in west virginia which is one of the best resources that we have there is fishing in the yeah. water and you destroy that from mining and they and they could be planting cannabis there which amends the soil which yep. can create thousands of jobs and it could clean up the state and it, absolutely and you guys have seen that 
here, how it's changed your state since oh, being yeah. a native. How, how many changes have you seen, Chris, from what's happened as a child to now with cannabis? I mean, as far as, you know, everything. And when I was younger, you know, I grew up kind of like seeing it grown and things like that. Um, you know, my parents weren't always the most legal people, <laughs> but... Um, you know, seeing it as it is now, you know, it's it's grown a lot more. It's grown to the point where you can somewhat cater to the things that you, like, you know, you need. You know, I want to, you know, I want to eat more. You know, there's a lot of people with depression that, you know, especially in a small town where you come from, there's not a lot to do. There's a lot of depression. People don't eat. People don't do the right things for themselves. Well, you know, the right indica, the right indica is going to give you the right mood high. The right indica is going to give you the right... Uh, you know, uh, appetite. appetite, yeah, yeah, so, I mean, anywhere from just being able to kind of cater what you want, and, I mean, I still see that as something that needs, you know, a lot of work, is mm -hmm. being able to cater it, you know, obviously. What is um, your favorite forms of consumption, guys? Edibles, smoking? Extracts. Extracts, extracts. for sure. Live diamonds, refined diamonds. Good extracts, good flour. Really good yeah. flavors, I want to be able to drink that. And I don't want to taste that oil in my mm -hmm. mouth. I want it all in my lungs. And really good, clean extracts. That's all I smoke. So I like the catering part you're talking about. I yeah. love strain-specific extracts. I've been trying to extract my own oils. Preserving mm -hmm. the terpenes is one of my biggest concerns sure. because I believe that gives you more of that catering you're talking about to your specific needs at the time of day or yeah, your absolutely. ailment or what's what you need to get relief from or what's going to make your day better, you know? Yeah. And the terpenes are what change all of that. And you guys are starting up special, something special here. And uh, it's all about the terpenes and how you can do what we just explained, like fine tuning. Can you explain kind of what you're going into right now, guys? Um, so I guess the idea behind what we're going into is being able to kind of mass produce good quality extract and also start catering, you know, like you were saying, with the terpenes in, in a good way towards, you know, whatever it is that you need um you know if yeah yeah i can brush up on that like for example you know people with you have a foot ache and you find that your favorite pheno is chem dog for some reason but you don't like the flavor and the taste profile of chem dog well something in that chem dog is your dose and that is what's alleviating that pain for whatever you're smoking it for but what we're trying to do is break down and figure out why that dose is there and then give you a different flavor profile if you want tropicana banana or if you want garlic gas we want to give you that same dose and alleviation that the chem dog gave you because that's why you smoke that's why you started smoking to begin with and that's why you smoke every day and why you're a saturated person and that we want to be able to give you that dose of why you're smoking but allow you the opportunity to play with these different flavors that only come from this plant and that we can only grow from these plants they do grow in other species and different plants out there but cannabis is unique for this reason and we want to give that playability to the consumer okay i want to break it back just a hair for some of the listeners out there because some of them don't even know what a terpene is so right. <laughs> which one of you can actually explain what a terpene is real quick to the new people out there that are still trying to explain and things with indica and sativa it's super easy okay, to say sure. indica sativa and hybrid style. But Bar yeah. real easy. Um, the Bar basic stuff. of it is uh, a terpene is an essential oil. The cannabis plant is full of essential oils and not just THC, not just CBD, but there are also other chemicals inside that, you know, uh, pining comes out of pine trees, um, but is also found largely in, uh, you know, hemp produced plants. Um, you know, that pine smell, things like that. They're the essential oils that come out of the plant. And those essential oils are also good for, you know, consumption in all different ways. So that's, I guess, the, the basic of what a terpene is, is just the essential oil from the plant that has really nothing to do with THC or, you know, any of the, like, actual cannabinoids. Yeah, I've uh, heard uh, Ethan Russo 
PhD uh, can I, uh, talking about cannabinoids, the endocannabinoid system, and terpenes, one of his specialties, yeah. and how they interact. And uh, they come in different ratios, minute amounts, and when you mix them up, it's like mixing up a cologne or a perfume. You know, it it's is. like it's the, very like a like, sommelier, like chemi- chemistry lab yes. or something. Yeah, mm-hmm. and th- this is what we are trying to provide in the industry is we want to start doing that. We want to start sommelierring these different terps. We want to start identifying them. Some of them might not be a smokable terp. But if you have a pheno that is high in that one terpene, when you go to smoke it, you're not going to realize in a concentrate, by definition, we're concentrating it. So when I concentrate something that is a non-smokable terp into a concentrate, I'm making a non-smokable concentrate. And that data isn't out there. And labs don't know that. And that's what we're trying essentially to bring awareness to and start pioneering with our lab is what are these essential oils? Why are they here? And what do they do? What are they good for? Not just smoking. I mean, some of them are ingestible and only ingestible. Some of them are topical. And they only go on your skin. And that definition of where they line up is why cannabis users go to the dispo to begin with. Somebody is there for a reason. Whether it's getting away from their 9 to 5 or checking out from being a a stay-at-home mom or a single mom and or having pain or anything. I mean... There are a plethora of users, and we want to start dialing in why you're a user. We need to normalize when you're going to a dispensary that you're not just getting THC shoved down your throat. There are other things that are there for you. So one of the new terms out there to describe cannabis is a chemo bar. (laughs) And instead of saying indica sativa and hybrid, uh, which it still will use just because it's what people know, but... The terpene profiles, which are on most of the bags or most of the concentrates or whatever mm-hmm. you buy, you can get a terpene profile. And uh, the, there is no database, like you said. And when you have a strain, like we'll talk about uh, chem dog. Sure. Chem dog grown here, chem dog grown in Florida, chem dog grown in West Virginia, another state. They're all yeah. going to have a different chemo bar, meaning their terpene mm-hmm. profiles, even if it's the same clone. Yeah. So it's going to be really hard to get a database. Exactly. But what you're talking about, like if I, like somebody here at Area 420 has a harvest, they get that terpene profile. Then you can mimic that terpene profile specifically. You don't have to have a database, right? But yeah, <clears throat> and, and that's why we came out to Area 420. This this place allowed us for the first time to look at this like Napa Valley wine. We have all these grape and what we call cultivars, and they're going to grow these phenos for the order that the lab needs. And it starts with the genetic and the seed. And the last thing the lab wants to do is waste time running a thousand pounds to fill an order when a cultivar could have grown something and they could have extracted it with 300 pounds. And that is where the symbioticness of Area 420 is unfound anywhere in the United States or anywhere that I know of. And that's why we're here, is we have a plethora of really good cultivars who can take genetics, grow them to the best of their capability, and we can give them the data. If three farms out here grow the same chem dog and one farm doesn't meet the standard, but two of them blew them out of the water, well, we're not going to tell them, hey, you're a bad grower, but hey, these two guys over here doing the same method, the same mediums, growing the same system, are doing something different and they are willing to mentor you. And the symbioticness of Area 420 is where we as a lab really get to shine. So with these, as you were saying, the therapeutic part is kind of like aromatherapy because they all, all these aromas mix in different mixtures. You can isolate these smells too. And uh, sometimes, like you said, they're, they're different ways of ingesting them. Some of them are gonna be with a diffuser. You can put them in a, some kind of diffuser, right? To, can you explain yeah. that? I, my terminology on that's not good, but you can put them in the room. It'll 
Yeah, the diffuser. Emanate. You can use them in like essential oils and put them in diffusers, kind of like doTERRA oils, I guess, you know. Um, that would be your aromatherapies. Um, there are other good um, heavier terpenes like uh, humulene, um, bisbalol, there's things like that. Um, and, you know, bisbalol I've seen a lot. And while I was working in the CBD industry, uh, bisbalol has a uh, really good effect. Uh, what is it? A uh, anti-inflammatory effect. Um, so, you know, a lot of these high, heavy hemp strains where people are saying, you know, the CBD is what's doing it for me, um, you know, that could be totally wrong. What if this bisbalol, that gets stuck with it because it's around the same boiling temperature when you collect it, that that bisbalol is also really good in that. So what if we're, you know, giving everybody CBD when we could be giving everybody bisbalol? But bisbalol has no, you know, cannabinoid effect, so... It, it would be using an essential oil, topically, ingestibly, um, however you would use an essential oil. Your lighter essential oils, basically you could use those for um, aromatherapies and things like that. Your limonenes and things that boil off. They smell sweet and they smell, you know, they come off at you. Um, whereas some of them kind of stick around and they like, they settle heavy. So they don't kind of come off the plant. But it's just chemical still... compounds are just yeah. different, right? And yeah, the, it's uh... their gravity. It's literally mm -hmm. their actual gravity is like their weight. Some of, some of these terps are fat, little fat guys, and some of them are really skinny. Mm -hmm. And when you put them in rotation, the little guys float away and the fat guys stay. And that's mm -hmm. what we call lights and heavies. Mm -hmm. And Well, it's the idea of chromatography. Yeah. I mean, if anybody's familiar with the idea of chromatography, it's... Uh, long story short, it's uh, you push it through a filter uh, that's very solidified and the things that come through first are your lights because they were able to make their way through. Uh, the things that come through after are you know your mids and your heavies. Um, just because the molecule then gets bigger and bigger and bigger, it finds its way through uh, this filter but at a different time. And so that's kind of our idea, that's the idea of chromatography. Nice. Yeah, I've heard about it. Wasn't explained at that easy at that easy level. Barney so style. Yeah. I've Everything is Barney while, style. Man. Yeah, we try to Barney style. As try to talk to somebody at a bar. So it's the this. centrifuge. <laughs> they come off earlier. We were talking about about how volatile some of these mm -hmm. uh, terpenes are, and that some of them will be emanating from the. Um, greenhouse but once you pick them they're lost so yeah. it's like you got to like, catch them fresh absolutely you get some like, of those lighter ones that yeah. are very volatile yeah and there there are chirpings i mean that's what you smell when you walk into a flowering room when your harvest is in bloom mm -hmm. and you go down there and everything that hits your nose and every time you grab a bud and you're smelling your fingers, yeah, those resins they are just on the outside. Those are terpenes that are purging at the temperature of your fingers. And yeah, so like at, at 80 degrees or 90 yeah, degrees where it, your fingers yeah. burn, they are actually combusting and they're gone. And they're right gone. into your nose and they're gone. The oh, second you smell those, they are gone. And that's, we want to refine that. So you catch it quick. Uh, okay. Is there a difference from catching it right as it's picked or is there some drying to it and then or what's the best method of conserving before you do this method so i guess the best method i've heard of is really as you pick you then vacuum seal and keep it in a cold place um really it's i mean you know how you get uh, you get different smelling plants you have an outside plant and you have an inside plant it's that temperature difference um the air and mixture and everything so i guess the best way to just catch it would be yeah as soon as you uh, capture your plant you would you know, bag it yeah just bag it bag it keep it until you're Freeze ready to blast it ready to do whatever it is you're ready to do with it because you want to lock in those turps and the second you cut that plant your turps are already releasing mm -hmm. so you want to i mean fresh frozen in the industry especially in the lab whether you're doing rosin or solvents it fresh frozen beats everything i mean it's the terpiest cleanest it's right there live. That's why batters is as expensive as it is. That's why rosin is as expensive as it is. Yeah, because the yields aren't there. It's just yeah, it's, but it's that flavor. It's that and it's that clarity. It's that quality, and that's what we're trying to explain is with fractional distillation, refining these terps down we can hit that flavor profile and we can hit those marks even at a fifteen dollar gram of shatter. 
and that's the goal is to really hit this this market with a new quality of what shatter and butter and diamonds should be at and really set a new bar so we were talking earlier about combusting these and how some of them are volatile and combust at low temperatures and dabbing them yeah mm -hmm. and the best way to dab them would be a cold start can you explain that yeah so cold starting um chris are you familiar with cold starting yeah cold start um so when you cold start your dab or you have kind of my favorite way to take dabs is like low temp very low temps you know i don't mind losing a little bit of the cannabinoid as long as i'm ingesting the good flavors um so it's uh, a cold start would basically yeah you you enter your dab and then you uh you would heat it up and as you heat it up then you cap it and smoke it at a temperature so like at a lower temperature it's easier with an electronic rig instead of Absolutely. having a, 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 oh yeah uh, the torch the torch, torch method and... yeah the torch method i mean you're using a hand torch you're putting the globe on so mm -hmm. you're going to load your glass with your dab and then you're going to put your globe on and then you're going to start torching and the second you see any bubble vaporization you're going to start pulling and it's going to give you the cleanest tastiest and the second you see a bubble just slow down and pull your lighter off yeah so and most of you guys out there will see people dabbing they'll take the torch to the head of the get uh, a reddish get it so red yeah. and hot wait till it cools down because it's so hot and then dab. but that combustion is so volatile it's You're hard on your lungs yourself. yeah, yeah. That, and it's not and it's not good for you it no, makes you cough no exactly and that's what we're trying to also show is there's a difference between a hot hit and a harsh hit and like you can take a big hit and cough your face off mm -hmm. but then you can also take a hot hit and that's something that wasn't purged correctly that's something that sure. wasn't make your dab sweat yeah, yeah man yeah and it makes you almost just not be able to catch your breath your lungs feel like they're on fire and that's the difference is the purging i mean being able to take a one gram dab and just cough because it was a big hit and taking the like just a regular quarter gram dab or an even an eighth gram dab and coughing your face off and running to the bathroom because it's too hot yeah. on your lungs i mean yeah. that is how you extract it starts with how they did it in the lab and that's what we want to clean that's we want people to be able to take a college stringer or a soccer mom to be able to take a little dab for her dose just so she can yeah. make it through practice. So the biggest thing about this company is all these terpenes are cannabis derived, correct? Yes. And this is throwing a little loophole and slowing it down just because it is from cannabis. What is the deal with that? Oh, man. Uh, I just don't like terps from other plants. I, I feel like if we're smoking this plant, if I'm going into the dispo and I'm going to buy a gram or a distillate card or an edible, it should be from the plant. It should be from cannabis. It shouldn't be from anything else. There shouldn't be homogenized oil from anything else other than this plant. And if we can't hit those flavors, they shouldn't be on the shelf. So you were mentioning also about some legal issues and you got a lawyer working on and so we can get this stuff onto a public shelf, public, public retail shelf. shelf. Yeah, I yeah. know something similar was in, uh, we were talking about in Washington with some lotion and it was like a Kava or something. Yeah. And they went in and gave the local jurisdiction or the state government and presented it correctly and they were like, there's yeah, no they reason they couldn't. It's they CBD. They showed the potential of zero cannabinoids in an essential oil that can go into a lotion for general consumers and not have anything else in it that can this is what hemp what everybody in hemp and when hemp came out this is what they are going to expect it should have been when you get a hemp lotion and it smells like tropical breeze that's well, we, not real <laughs> yeah well, I've had some... Uh, it's not real terps. It's not real smells. They're I've just... had it on the other side, though, where you get a vape pen, it's CBD, but it has some rosemary scent or flavor or some other plant mm -hmm. in there, and I was kind of turned off on it. I really wasn't a fan of it. It just wasn't yeah. natural to me. 
One of the big yeah. one is like the watermelon flavors, the bubblegum flavors. Like, oh, those aren't real flavors. Those are made up flavors. Those. Yeah, I think they actually like uh, put too much in there. And so really, yeah. some of them are very strong and they Absolutely. just need very minute amounts when you're talking about these mixtures. Yeah, yeah I've gotten these tasty pins before where you smoke these tasty pins and they, they they taste like, you know, monster energy or something wild, you know. Yeah. And the the hit off of it's harsh, but you don't get that high off of it. It's hot. And it's well it's, it's hot. Yeah, it's a hot hit, but it's it you, you might be volatizing these can you know, these terpenes uh, from different plants, you know, and you're volatizing these into your lungs. What are you know, we need to stop making the customer a guinea pig essentially. Yeah. You know, hey, you know, what's the best flavor? What's the best taste? Like, what's it doing to your lungs? We're not going to find that out for another I've learned five, the hard way by smoking tainted weed back at the, in my Absolutely. youth. And Non-flush? They didn't flush it? <laughs> or yeah, just molds and mildews from Absolutely. brick weed. Yep. Yeah. Reggie's and swag. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it tore my lungs up. I would get pneumonia or bronchitis pretty easily. Yep. And a, a dab, a nice clean dab, will help clean it out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm not a big fan of distillates. I know that when I worked in the dispensary, uh, mm. people would come in, and the first thing, I want the strongest THC content in a vape pen that you got. Yeah. Best bang yeah. for my buck. I'd be like, oh, all right, this is it, but I wouldn't recommend it. I would recommend this one here with a little bit more flavor and less THC, a yeah. little more terpene profile. It's oh, the entourage man. effect. You want the rest of it with it. You don't just want THC. I mean, some people do, but do they really? <laughs> They don't. They don't know. You know, they just want whatever is going to get me the highest. Yeah, well, it, it's things that us experienced growers or experienced mm-hmm. consumers know. And we're like, yeah, I got this stuff. It's super strong. Mm-hmm. Don't tell them TAC content. Don't even tell them what it is. And they'll be like, oh man, I'm so fucking high off of that, man. Absolutely. And it's a placebo. Be like, ha ha, that shit yeah. was like the ten percent C THC. Uh, yeah, that was my CBD. CBD but yeah. But the terpene profile was like a purple or something. It just made them yeah. couch lock and just Absolutely. relaxed them. And the purple was everybody knows in the cannabis community. It's kind of like a grapey, maybe a dimetap or like a, it's hard to explain, berry, because yeah. mm-hmm. it varies a little bit. But yeah. it's, everybody knows a purple smell. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and it's kind of relaxing yeah, body-wise. Yeah, here too. Uh, that's, that's a big thing too, is we want to be able to refine those feelings those memories, I mean, that's a big thing with smell. It's a link and trigger to your memories and things like that. And beyond the scope of just buying extracts, I want to know what I'm smoking and I want to be nostalgic. If I go in there and say I want skunk number one, I want to taste it, I want to smell it, I want to know this is the skunkiest, nastiest smelling dabs I can take because these guys fractionally made it and they Chris and I take passion in this because we are consumers and because we don't want anybody else in this industry to not have to smoke something that they don't want to just to get an effect we want them to get the effect that they want and still smoke something fruity or terpy or garbagey or skunky and give that freedom back to them. How many different terpenes have you guys discovered or know of yourself in the cannabis plant alone? There's hundreds. There's, yeah. I mean, a, a really good book is The Big Book of Terps. It shows, I mean, hundreds, hundreds, hundreds and hundreds. And that's what makes this so awesome is we get to catalog and database from the some of the best cultivars in the United States out here and some of the best geneticists in this industry and we're still looking for the best geneticists we're still looking for the best growers because our product is a reflection of their hard work and we want to pay tribute to that and when somebody calls us and wants an order for a certain terp we want to know it came from the best pheno, from the best cultivator to our lab to give our consumer the best experience that they can offer and that we can offer. So yeah, one of the biggest things I know from older consumers that they say weed is a little different, it's stronger now, but one of the main differences in the older herb is 
there's a lost skunk. You can't find it. And the skunk that everybody wants. When you find it, let me know. I'll be one of your first customers. Right. After that, it's the pine, pining, yeah. pinning, whatever, mm-hmm. you, however you want to say it. It's, it's kind of lost. It was a, a very popular terpene before. Yeah. Uh, it's clear-minded. It mm-hmm. helped with uh, asthma. It cleaned out your lungs, opened up your bronchial tubes. Yeah. And uh, I know some people with bad lung issues. And uh, must be 420. <laughs> yep, they're happy 420. They're out here <laughs> to no horn at area 420. We'll have to salute to that. <laughs> so, uh, the pinning that's one that, uh, like I said, is kind of lost antidepressant and it can help expand the lungs help you breathe better for mm-hmm. asthma and that's one reason a lot of people don't smoke is because oh my lungs i yeah. can't the doctor yeah. told me um but the vapes Absolutely. like you said vapes at low temps mm-hmm. the vapes don't have as much tar that they yeah. actually if the right can have or a uh, terpene profiles there it will expand yeah. your lungs mm-hmm. too much will make you cough like a dog and you don't want that absolutely. but at the low quantity because it's a very strong terpene it's refinement mm-hmm. yeah absolutely and you you don't want to give them a heavy dose and it's different for every asthma patient, you know. Coming out of the CBD, CBG, CBN industry with Chris and refining and doing these um, distillations, you really appreciate the people that are banking on this product working. And some, like Chris pointed out earlier, somebody might be smoking a strain or taking something and realizing a chirp is the reason why it's helping them and unless a database is there or a company is there to start formulating that and say hey maybe we should look away from the THC or the CBGs or CBN and start looking at the oils Mm -hmm. because holistics India I mean Thailand they use essential oils everyday practices and everyday life and they work for certain reasons and that's all we're trying to do is say the cannabis plant has these same essential oils, we want to make sure we know what they're for and the consumer who needs it gets it. I want to actually go out and get a diffuser and uh, if you guys got any, some good pending or any good turf to trust out, let me know. Oh, absolutely. The beta caryophylline and humulene, which I think is actually like an alpha Hmm. caryophylline. They're related. Somehow they have a they're very similar mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. structure, so they. Caryophylline comes in a lot of THC Absolutely. derived. Hip, uh, it's what they it's what they teach drug dogs to sniff out, mm-hmm. and and that's why uh, they sniff it out. Is that's the main terp in every cannabis plant is that caryophylline. But it comes also in like hops, which Absolutely. is like the only mm-hmm. other plant in yeah, the cannabis family or something. And then there's uh, pepper, black yep. pepper. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got this uh, strain here. See if you can smell the back pepper in that hash oh, plant yeah. right there. That's the strongest hat. That's my favorite. You can break it oh, up man, a little it has bit too. It's like a funky. It's like sour cheese. Yeah. Or like sour milk and some black pepper. There's a black pepper in there. Would you like to grow your own cannabis at home? Are you able to now because it's legal in your state? Are you intimidated by the prices of seeds and worry if you can't even get the seeds to germinate? Are you worried it may be a waste of money and time to even try? This is how I felt when I first started growing for myself. Hundreds of dollars were spent and wasted because of my inexperience. Some of them got overwatered. Some of them were burnt by hot soil. Some didn't have the right environment and conditions to survive. If this is the case and you are hesitating to purchase seeds, for a limited time, Little Farmer is offering 50 random seeds from his personal collection for only $50. That is 50 seeds for only $1 each. Normal prices for seeds start around $10, and some people charge even more than that. This is a great way to get a lot of seeds without having to spend a lot of money. This is a great chance for all those who are intimidated by their prices and don't have to worry about failing on their first attempt for germination. This is also a great opportunity to see what goes well in your environment. As we all know, some strains will grow better in different regions due to the climate, and you will be able to see what thrives in your area with the variety that you will receive. These packs are good for experienced growers as well, as I have received nothing but great feedback thus far. Some strains included consist of Blue Dream, Gelato, Gelato Cake, Vanilla Haze, Head Smack, Green Crack, Purple Headband, 
Granddaddy Perps, Han Solo Burger, Tangy, GG4, Dynachem, Night Nurse, Golden Goat, Cookies, GMO, and many more. To get your hands on these packs, you will need to head over to the Little Farmer website at www.littlefarmer.com. That is L I L P H A R M E R dot com and put in an order. While there, you can browse other items available, including the tree lock box, to carry around all your consumption needs around in one handy lockable box. Included in the box is a pipe, a grinder, a container for your herb, a lighter, and two handy tools to help you prepare your herbs and your hash. My favorite thing about the box is the tray that you can use to break up your herb while preparing it for consumption. It is hard to spill and easy to clean up. I don't travel anywhere without mine. Finally, if you need any consulting for your home growing needs, please contact Little Farmer from his website's contact us page by leaving a message. We can help you with your lighting, growing mediums, and other growing questions because I not only sell seeds, but I help you grow them too. Make sure to take advantage of these seed prices while they last because they won't last long. And now, back to the show. All right, guys, we're back after a little break. We were talking about pinene, caryophylline, and how they are medically beneficial and how that caryophylline and humulene are somehow combined together. And then they're very good for pain and good for gastrointestinal issues. I've yeah. heard that from Ethan yeah. Russo, and uh, he uh, is one of the leaders in the terpenes and endocannabinoid system. So I listened to what mm-hmm. he says, and I want to try the aroma therapy with those sometime mm-hmm. in the future to see how that works. Your company is strictly cannabis terps, and there's an issue trying to get the cannabis terps onto a legal market that's not cannabis related, like uh, lotions and perfumes. And mm-hmm. you were mentioning something about moving it to perfumes, and. Uh, use with cannabis terpene yeah the idea is that we would just be able to move terps into the legal market because uh currently you're not able to sell them in um, outside of a you know marijuana facility so we can get it out even to like air fresheners in your car you can have some lemonine or some beta caryophylline mm-hmm. and not have to consume thc and that yeah, way absolutely. you don't have to worry about uh still have your favorite smell yeah you can still have your favorite smells taste flavors um, it doesn't have to have THC in it, which, like, I feel like that should be kind of more normalized. It's like, you know, what if, you know, what if some people just don't want to get that high, but they still want their, like, feelings of, like, uh, you know, their same kind of euphoria. It gets a nostalgic feelings from the past. I know that. If I yeah. had a great skunk or something, just smelled it. I'm like, oh, man, that brings mm-hmm. back memories. And uh, so basically, it is taking the smell of cannabis and putting it in a bottle, right? That's what everybody growing up, man. Yeah, you could yeah. take that smell and put it in a bottle, man. Yeah, your Kush cologne. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you're, you're yeah, actually doing it, right? Yeah, that's what we're looking into is, uh, yeah, trying to get it into the legal markets where it's able to, like, you know, transfer because uh, it doesn't have any THC in it. You know, I mean, you can. You can put THC in it and things like that. Um, but, I mean, we'll also be operating on the THC front as well. But... Yeah, no, there's a lot of things you can do with terpenes. Yeah, you mentioned uh, that in India they are using it for aromatherapy, but they actually use it in America too. It's like yep. airplanes, lavender. Mm-hmm. You mentioned linalool was the one from yeah, that. Yeah, linalool from like lavender. You get that out of cannabis as well. So they'll put it out in the air vents on a plane, calm people down. Uh, limonene, they'll put it out around noon in the office building. Mm-hmm. People are getting drowsy. It kind of gives them a little pep in the middle of the daytime yeah a little eucalyptus uh, kind of give you a pep you and know. people don't know this they fall for it really easily mm-hmm. but uh if you know about it then you know what they're doing you can smell it in the air yeah yeah absolutely and yeah i'd, I'd love the idea and so we were also talking about your database or database however you want to say it there is um you could do a specific to a client they have a great mm-hmm. batch that was awesome they want to repeat that and they're growing the same clones, but the next batch is good. Maybe they had a water, water failure or something. Uh, yeah, yeah. So essentially, you'd be good. able to save kind of people, you know, in a collective, where like in a normal business, you know, uh, you get some shitty weed, you don't sell it. Um, but it's not necessarily, you know, a shitty weed. But like, uh, you get something that's, you, you know, that plant didn't grow exactly the same as everything else. You can still kind of save it with the collective of the rest of the turps. You can still extract for what is 
left on that plan and then just you know add in for with the turps and things so yeah that's a great on a medical benefit that way you can keep it consistent if somebody likes it and medically that it gives them re good relief then they could mm -hmm. get that consistently 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 you got something really hard on pharmaceutical market is yeah, keeping it consistent from when it product. comes from a plant yeah absolutely if you could find like the consistent terpenes like the terpene profiles and i think that's one thing that we're able to achieve out here at area 420 is there's like it's a small it's a large collective really of like very high class knowledgeable growers and geneticists and you know i think this actually i think it has a really good chance of working um, and if that's the case then we'll be there to catalog terpene profiles and things like that we'll be able to have we'll be able to have the access to like um, store the knowledge really. yeah so that'd be great you have a so you're going to have a cultivar which people want to repeat consistently it's not consistent you can save them but also if they're trying to get that same profile as the breeders cut that chem doll 91 that, mm -hmm. that a lot of people like you can have the breeders cut and have a profile for them that all other breeders can base their grow off of, right? And then if yeah. it doesn't meet the standards, you can extract it, make it consistently like you want all the time. Yeah, absolutely. So it's like essentially setting up kind of a, a collective of grows that can like, yeah, essentially be saved if something happens. It's a collective, right? We're all in this together. So like yeah. you wanna, you know, you wanna boost your you know neighbor up because they have like a good, gen you know, they're good geneticists and they're good people. Um, they all, we all deserve a chance to learn more and things like that. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's it's a great community here. I like the share. Mm -hmm. It's uh, compassion based, uh, knowledge based. Uh, everybody's intuitive, very passionate about what they're doing here, and I'm glad I, I found it and being able to be a part of it myself. Mm -hmm. uh, looking forward to a lot of things in the future from you here. Uh, working out a uh, deal with getting some terpenes so I can enhance my life and try to experiment with myself without using THC because yeah, absolutely. I mean if I can get away from it I don't want to smoke or consume as much as I do you know but I mean it if makes you just, feels better you just then know the cocktail life. of what's going to help yep I want to fine tune know it you know ratio, yeah. like you said fine tune it to my specific mm -hmm. needs get that oomph in the middle of the day when I don't want to take a nap or mm -hmm. when I do want to take a nap yeah, absolutely. I know you should that definitely perfect terpene profile. That's where the future of cannabis is headed to, is the chemo bars and mm -hmm. finding that mixture of what does what yeah. in aromatherapy, aromatherapeutic effects of cannabis. Yeah, absolutely. They, uh, yeah, so many good like benefits to terps, um, you know, and they range in all different directions. And if you can add that with THC, you know, more the merrier. If you yeah, want to add that with other the cannabinoids absolutely. too. CBN, CBG, whatever can have annoy makes you feel best. Yeah, like I was saying, you got to like normalize not going into a you know dispensary looking for the highest THC content because maybe that's not what you're looking for. You yeah. know, the terpenes provide that entourage effect, and you find some good weeds. They all you know they don't all taste the same. They don't all feel the same. You can like put those into good use. Yep. Yeah. Hey, so I highly appreciate you coming on the show today. There's a little party going on out here. We're yeah, gonna go and motivate and mingle a little bit. And uh, once your operation gets up and running, we'll have you on again so you can uh, talk about it a little bit more in depth without being a little rushed. No, I feel you. All right. Yeah, cool. lots to talk about with troops, man. It was good to talk to you. Call him Dr. Earth for the healing meditation and good vibration. For food, fuel, fiber, and a little bit of fun. See, the joint ain't necessarily the point, but I want one.